Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about running multiple tasks in parallel and how we can make it very efficient. As we know, we always using tasks that went all in C Sharp for making sure all the tasks running in parallel, but maybe in some scenarios, it's not that efficient. So we are going to talk about alternative ways. As a disclaimer, the provided solution may not be applied for all the scenarios, so you need to know your requirements first and then use that. Let's get started with the code and let's see what we have here. Simply, we have three tasks, one, two, three. All of them are just having one task that delay as a one second, two second, and three seconds taking to run. First of all, we know that we can run tasks sequentially in this way by awaiting one by one. At the end, we know that all of them are completed. So let's just run the application here. We can see the one, two, and finally three. How long will it take to run is around six seconds, which is obviously correct because some all of task delays, it will three to one, which is six seconds. Usually when your tasks are independent, it's better to run them in parallel because there is no dependencies between your tasks. So it's a good reason for using the task that went all to run them in parallel. So how we can do that? First, we need to create the task, for example, task one here, and then we can say task two. We need to first remove the await one because we don't want to wait for tasks to be completed. And then simply here we can say await, yes, just like this. We are using task when all to make sure all the task is running in parallel. So let me just change this one as well and here as well. Here we are trying to run all of these three tasks in parallel. We are expecting all of the execution time should be three seconds. So if I run the code here, it takes three seconds to run as equal to the third one, which is taking three seconds to run, right? All good. But let's talk a little about this when all. When all in the description, it will create a task that will complete when all of the given task will be in completed state. Right here, we can see that there is a new task, a new object, a new overhead to your runtime just for keep an eye for the other tasks to be run. So this is one of the overhead of using when all but that's fine i mean it's working correctly so let's go a little to see the implementation of the when all it's getting params as a list of the task and then if the null through an exception and here it will converting the list of the task as a read only span to not you know uh, creating another list of tasks allocating extra memory just it will kind of a snapshot of that task in the memory so no more allocation and then here if there is no item in the list it will return the completed task otherwise it will create a promise for creating another task to monitoring all of the tasks to be completed and here the funny thing is there is a to-do comment here as well it seems dotnet team trying to i already checked that ticket here trying to, instead of using the params, directly injecting the read-only span as a task. Anyway, so here it's again trying to do many things internally and just for waiting and watching the task, all of them to be completed. In this scenario, we can use when all without any issues. I'm going to just change one of them here. Task one, after one second, trying to throwing new exception. It can happen. You have multiple tasks at runtime. So for any reason, maybe one of them threw an exception. That is a very normal scenario. Okay, now I'm gonna put this codes in a try catch block to just getting the exception. And we can just move this code. And then here, I'm not going to throw it just for running the application. And here we say right line. Actually, maybe I just need this time here. Right. 
So let's run the project. So we can see we have three tasks. One of them at the first second will through exception, but the rest two will just running until they are completed. Done two, done three, and then error. So we can see that it started at 38 second and then 41. A still task that went all waiting all of those tasks to be completed and then through an exception. It is fine because it's written in all the documents that the task that went all always waiting for all of the tasks to be done. And then if any of them or some of them throw in exceptions, they will put it in kind of aggregate exceptions and then will throw the exceptions. But the point here is it will wait for all of the tasks to be completed, right? So what we can do in any case, if you have some independent task that your requirement is, okay, if only one of the tasks is failed, I don't care about the other task. I want to just throw in exception, just I want to handle my application because I don't care about the other task. They are already failed because, you know, I need all of those tasks to be completed and then I will do my other logic in our application, right? Using tasks that went all cannot help for us because it's always waiting for all of them. What we can do, I'm going to check one things. As you know, when you are doing this, creating the task, for example, one, two, three, the task is already running. The task is already started, you know, in background. And then this when all is just to making sure all of your task is running until completed. So what I mean here, I mean, right after this do one, the task is already started. How we can know that longest task is three seconds, right? So if I put just five seconds delay here, task that delay for five seconds, and then I want to ignore or skip this one because it will go to this exception. I want to show you that we don't need the when all here. And then just if we are putting a delay for five seconds, we can see that all of the tasks are running in background. So if uh, we zoom in, right. So you can see without any when all, all of our tasks are running in the background. What it means here? It means when the task is already created, all of these tasks have one status property, which is the enumeration created, waiting for activation, waiting for run running, run to completion. This one is task completed successfully and then canceled, halted. But when the task created, it's already start running. You saw that without using the when all, we saw all of the tasks are running. What I want to say here, let's just remove this line. So what happened if I do only such as this code, task two and then task three? Think about it. Is it running in parallel or sequentially? Because we know that if we commented this kind of things, just like the initial code, we ran all of them sequentially. But now here is different. We created a task for each of them and then awaiting them. So here, actually, they are running in parallel, right? Let's run the code to see they are running or not. Yeah all three seconds to run it means in parallel and no need to use task that went all but still this is not our scenario our scenario still remains here if one of our tasks through an exception in uh, one second we should not wait for two more seconds as we were waiting for the task that went all two more seconds but here let's see let's see what we can do and uh, let's see the result. It was freeze. Let me run the code again. Yeah. So here you can see without waiting or doing anything else, it will return only one seconds. 
after one second, we threw the exceptions and then catch it and done, right? Without doing anything else. But there is a chance and actually you need to know that the task here all running in background. What it means? It means even if the task one threw in exception here and we are breaking this block going through the exception, the catch block, those two tasks still running in background until they are completed or canceled or whatever. So there is no way to just saying if your application is going to the cache block, but those tasks is detached from the, the current context. What it means, it means if I just put another task delay here, for example, I don't know, for five seconds, we should see this logs on the console. So let's just run again. Yeah, nice. So this is the the myth for the task when once they are fired they should run in the background until they are completed but there is a way to handle this one using cancellation token cancellation token actually is really good one for managing your resources your i don't know task whatever and I have another video long time back for using all of the scenarios for the cancellation token in Web API. If you would like to how to use cancellation token in Web API, you can watch that video as well. So what we can do here, we can pass the cancellation token. The only place that we can put the cancellation token is here, but in your application, maybe you are using some EF core or services, database operation, which is supporting cancellation token as well. So let's just put cancellation token for all of this task. And then let's see how we can cancel the background task once one of them through the exception. So I'm gonna put all of them. We need to find a way to have global cancellation token because we need to send one cancellation token to all of the, our tasks. Usually it's like this because once you have one API call going to your layers, you are using the HTTP context that request averted that is cancellation token coming from the pipeline. So if there is request canceled, connection dropped, or uh, for any reason, that cancellation token will be fired and you can use that one. But here I'm going to create cancellation token source and then we are going to pass the same cancellation token for all of the tasks. I think you got the idea what uh, I'm going to do. In the catch, it is possible to cancel this cancellation token. I'm going to check if the first tasks are done or in this case through an exception. I don't need to wait for the other one, which is we able to get this possibility in the, the previous code. But now we don't want to wait or keeping those tasks running in the background. By canceling this cancellation token, those tasks should be canceled. Again, I'm putting this task delay here just saying that done. So we should not see any other logs for this two and three. Let's run the code. Yes. So we are able to cancel the other task and also only for one second. Only for one second, the tasks are done. And also we didn't wait for all of the other tasks that task that went all was doing that. This is the scenario that maybe some of developers think because we are putting a wait like this, they are running sequentially, which is not correct because once this do one return the task here, it's already a start running and a start executing in the background so that we just need to put a way to making sure all of them are completed. This is very specific one. I mean, if you have some kind of logic that you may think, okay, this is kind of error prone, this code, and there is a high chance to have an exception, maybe it's good to consider this approach not using when all. 
The question is, is it good for all scenarios who are using this approach? For sure, no, it depends. I mean, for this await, when all is a clear one. Everyone knows about what is happening behind the scenes for this when all. So it's good to use it. But in some specific scenarios that is like this, it's kind of very more efficient to not using the when all and just putting the await here. So there is another question that you may ask. What if we don't know how many tasks we have? Like you have for loop that just creating some task on the fly and then you want to waiting for all of the tasks until they are done. I would say if you don't want to use the, the when all, simply you can create an extension method to handle that. For example, like this, I'm going to just create it as extensions. And here we can say property static async task custom when all. Just like the task, we are going to get a list of tasks or params. It's uh, no matter here. And here we are trying to create a for loop. And yes, that's the, the code here. I think it's a good one. So we are trying to wait one by one. And then if any of them throwing exception, we just, okay, just throw, because we should not clear the stack here. We just throwing the exception. I um, also want to know if this task working or not. Actually, it's not the extension, but we can have when all, and then yes, this is the, the things, wait. That's it. Let's run the application and see if it's working or not. Yeah, it's actually working. After one second, it returns to the catch block and then we cancel cancellation token and all cancel the other task, right? So in this video, I wanted to show you that this scenario, we can use another approach rather than the one all. You need to be careful if you want to use this approach because maybe it's not very common to use this approach. All of the, the code, the sources is using when all, but it depends on your logic. If you have such a this scenario, for sure, it is very efficient way to use this, you know, fail fast scenario. But keep in mind, you have to use cancellation token to cancel those background tasks. Otherwise, you have a lots of tasks running in background. Maybe it goes to kind of unhandled exceptions or your application doesn't work in the, the proper way. So it's always good to cancel background tasks to not allowing them if you don't need them after stopping them or canceling those tasks. It was really interesting for me as well to check this code to see it's actually running in parallel if you put await one by one after you're creating the task. If you don't agree with this code, please leave a comment for me. I want to know your opinion about this approach as well. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Bye.